So, good morning everyone. Glad to have you here. Uh, today is, we're continuing, I'm doing a, a sermon on Psalm 51. So, we have moved from general psalms to specific psalms. Today we're looking at Psalm 51. So, let us together share the call to worship. We gather to worship the God of our salvation. We praise God who offers us joy and unity. We receive the comfort of Christ's redeeming love. We are renewed by the Holy Spirit to live our lives in God's grace. Please stand as you're able and join us in singing.
this beautiful, famous one, the one who is greater than we can imagine. And we are grateful that even in your greatness, you love us, you come to us, you dwell with us, and you bless us. We ask you today to help us to know your presence and hear your word for us today. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.
common, common thing, is it? There is a pretty picture. Would you be? There are extras. I have just enough for you. But if anybody out there wants some, you may grab some more. I give them one or two. Okay. Readers. Anybody who can read? What does that say? Yeah. Forgiving makes us happy. Now, I hope that's true. Sometimes it's hard to forgive. Who knows what forgiveness is and forgiving? Exactly. Did something wrong and say, I'm sorry, and you apologize. Or somebody else does something wrong and you say, yes, I forgive you, and I accept your apology. So it can go both ways. We can be forgiven and we can be forgiving. But this is basically saying that if we do that, that makes us happy. And so you got people with little people with really big smiles on this on this uh, picture, yeah. and their hearts really big smiles, and their hearts glowing up from it like it's floating, and that's for love and happiness. Are we gonna color it? You may take that and color it. Yeah. There are colors over there. You see, you just know everything. Do we get to keep them or not? You get to keep them. Or you can give them away to somebody if you want to. So those, this is all about forgiveness and that God can, beyond us forgiving other people, we also know that God forgives us. So the scripture that you're going to hear in a minute is all about God forgiving and that God loves us and forgives us. And what does that mean? That makes us happy too. So today is all about that. Another word for God forgiving us and us being happy is grace. Have you heard that word a lot? It's kind of hard to describe, but that's what it's all about. God forgives us, and we're happy, and we know that, and we know that God loves us, and that makes us happy. So that's what all the service is about. We've been hearing, we've been singing some songs about that, and that's what I'm going to talk about after the scripture. So let's say a prayer, and you go back to your seats. Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for forgiving us. Help us to remember. How much you love us. Amen. Thank you. May have that She's coming. Good morning. One passage of scripture today, Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to the abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, I have sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward beings, therefore teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sin and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me in a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and your sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your presence and your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure, 
Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings, and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered to your altar. The word of the Lord. So the scripture from the Psalms that we just heard, Psalm 51, is the lectionary passage, the psalm for Ash Wednesday every single year. This psalm is how we enter into Lent every year. Uh, psalm 51 speaks of reflection, forgiveness, redemption, renewal. It invites us to look at ourselves and to invite God into our hearts. Simple to say, not always easy to do. Uh, more than likely, the Psalm 51 was written for use in a uh, temple sacrifice ritual of forgiveness or in reflection upon that uh, temple sacrifice or even for the annual day of atonement, uh, which is still practiced in Jewish tradition today. Uh, Psalm 51 calls us to examine our hearts, to examine our lives, and to make commitments to do better and to be better by God's grace. It is thought that that last verse that I did have read um, was actually added later uh, because if you see, there's a little internal conflict in there. It's saying, God doesn't want a sacrifice. God wants your heart. And then the last line says, but if you rebuild the temple, God will want, will want your heart. Uh, sacrifice. So it's believed that that last verse was added during the post-exile when they were trying to rebuild the temple. And so uh, this this whole statement about how God uh, doesn't really need your sacrifices, God wants your heart, that a priest kind of added that on, but, but we, in other words, we really want your offerings after all. <laughs> and, and God would be pleased with that. Which says to me, uh, that it's used in worship, and God accepts our worship and accepts our sacrifices and our offerings in any way that we come, but that sometimes we can get things a little bit wrong as well. That's kind of what the whole thing is talking about, how we sometimes get things wrong, and God loves us anyway. As I said to the kids, that's grace. The psalm speaks to us and for us, about uh, the universal human journey into the presence of God, about, about what it's like when we come into God's presence. We come to God aware of uh, how great God is, but then also aware of our own frailties and failures, our shortcomings, uh, and our sins. Uh, when we come into God's presence, we know what we do right and what we do wrong. And by God's grace, by God's love, by God's light, somehow we are made whole again. We are born again, made new again. Just by being in the presence of God, just by coming to God. There is healing offered in this psalm. Uh, there is transformation promised in this psalm. What needs to change? You, we're encouraged to think about that. What needs to change? And God offers hope for all that is good. God says, you can be blessed. You can receive grace. Come to God and receive this. God reminds us that we are not only flawed and faulty and seeing our own faults and our own darkness. We are also very much blessed and beautiful in God's eyes. God reminds us that because of God's incredible, unexplainable acceptance of us, because of that grace, the brokenness in our lives can be repaired. We can start over. The emptiness can be filled. And the miraculous can happen. That is the promise of God's grace. Anything is possible. Everything is possible. Because of God's mercy, because of God's power, because of God's faithfulness and God's favor, the absolute best that we can imagine, and even better than we can imagine, has been promised and will be fulfilled. That is God's gift. The psalm invites us to both 
introspection, thinking about our own lives, and imagination, thinking about what God would have for us. We look into ourselves and we look into the very will of God as we share this scripture. We see all that we could be by God's grace. The psalm invites us to, to reflect on who God is, to think about who God is, who we are as well in relation to this sovereign redeemer, in relation to God. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, it says. For we know you can. We know you will if we ask. Create in me a clean heart. Take the brokenness of my life, of our lives. Take what we said before you and help us to begin again. That's God's promise to us. The introspection called for in the, in the psalm can cause us to see what we really don't want to see in ourselves if we take the time if we look. Again, we can see our mistakes, our problems, our faults. The emphasis on cleansing from sin can cause us to notice that sin, to notice the darkness more deeply. But the psalm is not asking us to dwell in that darkness. In fact, the psalm calls us to live in the light, to come out of that darkness. Notice the darkness, yes, but move toward the light. That is the call of the psalm. The call is to change what we need to change, to identify what we need to change, and to make those changes, and to trust God with everything that is left. Trust God with all the rest. We rejoice that God has set aside guilt and shame and all that is not all that it should be. And as the scripture says, God has made us whiter than snow. That's the promise of Jesus Christ, that Jesus takes away all of our sin, and Jesus helps us to move forward into new life, into what God wants us to be. That's the promise, the goodness, the grace. Then we are able to receive all that goodness and offer service as well. We can begin again by God's grace. New life is possible. Anything is possible by God's Spirit. It's about renewal and joy in God's salvation. We are, we are called to rejoice and be happy, as the children's time said, as we praise God. The stages of the song uh, correspond or, or follow the flow of a worship service that we might have. The, the psalm first invites us into worship with God. And when we come into the presence of God, we recognize who we are. We recognize what needs to change and what is good. We receive the word of God as grace. We offer our gifts to God in thanksgiving. And then we go out into the world to serve, to answer that call that God has given. Renewed by the power and the presence of God. This psalm begins, have mercy on me. That is how we begin any time we come into the presence of God. Any time we come to worship, maybe even every single day, we begin, as we approach God, have mercy on him. Recognizing the power of God, the presence of God, knowing God's mercy, knowing God's grace, favor, blessing. We know that God is faithful. We, we have experienced God's personal, powerful love. And that is where we always begin. And quickly, in the presence of God, we recognize how far from God we are, how much we might need to change. We see our shortcomings or our mistakes, things that God calls us to answer. So as we come to worship, and now in worship, you're invited to think about anything that is weighing on your heart, anything that um, is not quite right. And perhaps you think of a burden or a, a barrier, brokenness, sin, sadness, a worry, Anything that is separating you from God or from all that God is calling you to be. Think about anything that needs to change, any challenge in your life. And here's the point. Offer that to God. Let God see your heart. Let God know what is on your heart. 
Let God then take away that burden or that barrier. Give it to God, as they say. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, the scripture says. And the assurance is God will offer grace. In most of our worship services, near the beginning of the service, we have a prayer. Uh, our natural response in the presence of God. We, we often pray a prayer of confession or uh, share what we, where we are in our lives, how we have started. Um, ask, and ask God's forgiveness and God's redemption in our lives. And in our worship, this is always followed by some kind of assurance of pardon, declaration of forgiveness, reminder of God's grace, usually in a song. Usually in this service, in a, in a response to God's grace. Knowing that God loves us. The psalm offers images of God wiping away sin or guilt. Uh, the words, wash me, cleanse me, clean me, clear me, all of these. Set me right, God, is the request. All of these remind us that um, we are called to be all that we are called and created to be. We are encouraged by God to grow in grace. And we ask God to help make it so. For Christians, all of these images, uh, all these words, cleanse, wash, clean, clear, all of these remind us of baptism. That in our baptisms, we join with Jesus. We are promised that we belong to God. And because of that promise and because of that washing, we are clear to be with God. Our hearts are clear. Jesus has washed away all of our sin and everything that separates us from God. Jesus has taken away our burdens and, and set everything right again. Everything starts over by God's grace. Because of God's grace, everything in you is possible. By God's grace, we receive new life in Christ. We are given everything that we need to start over, to begin again, to make things right here and now. We are given the nourishment and the strength to start each day and start over when we need to, to live as God wants us to live. The psalm walks us through this ideal coming into God's presence, this worship experience. Any encounter that we have with God, we come into God's presence, we recognize all that God is, then we begin to understand who we are, both good and bad, and we realize that God calls us to be our best. We are given space to choose to let God in. Always, God lets us choose. If we choose to receive God's grace, then our hearts are transformed and our lives are changed and we go out speaking God's grace and sharing it with others. The song ends with joy, deliverance, a desire to share what we have received. So it is that we move forward. Every time we find ourselves in God's presence, we go out in joy. We receive God's gifts and we are filled with God's grace, renewed by God's spirit. We go out from here, not with the darkness, the despair, the burdens, anything that is wrong. We go out from here with the hope of new life and the promise that God will deliver that grace for us. New life just around the corner, a new life made possible because of God's love in Jesus Christ. Whenever we come into God's presence, we leave refreshed and renewed. We remember that our hearts belong to God. And because of that, we are able to serve God faithfully and fully and share that love in the world. And as our Presbyterian calling says, uh, we can serve God with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love. We are filled with everything we need and we are able to go out in God's grace. So let us accept that challenge as we go out into the world to live God's grace and love wherever we go. Amen.
that healing may begin. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the people on our list, the people that I've named, the people in our hearts, those who are in need of healing or grace or redemption or salvation or, or just knowing that you are with them. Help them to feel your presence. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the sick and the hospitalized, those in nursing homes, those who are homebound. We pray for those who are grieving loss, those who are facing challenges. And we ask that you help us to figure out how to help others and be your witnesses of light and life in the world. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all the young adults starting college and uh, moving away and being off on their own, particularly thinking of our, our kids. We ask your blessing for them. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, I just look at all those that help within our church. Lord, I just um, I'm so thankful for the volunteers that to take their time. Uh, to make the ministries um, that we have here in our church successful. Lord, I pray for um, those who may want to help but may not know how to ask. Lord, I just pray for those serving. I just pray that we remember that we are serving you and not ourselves, Lord. And I'm just thankful that um, we can. Gracious God, we know that you hear our hearts and whatever is on our hearts. And you know, we know that you hear our prayers and, and move toward redemption and resolution. We ask you for the rest of the day to remind us again and again of your presence. That we may see you, that we may hear you, that we may know your love, and that we may share that love and grace wherever we go. We also pray today in gratitude for all the ways you have blessed us, for the gift of your spirit, for this church community, for, for so many blessings in our lives. Especially we pray in thanksgiving for Jesus, who taught us to pray as we now pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Please stand if you're able and join us in the hall.
the cool thing about God, and one of the many cool things about God, is God's not only the superhero, but God makes you superheroes as well. God gives you the power to witness in the world and do that love and grace. So, superheroes, following the superhero, go out in the world and share that love and light. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and everyone. Amen.